Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering how you can dynamically change the language or the locale of your application. This is very useful if you have multiple languages that you support and you want to give your users, you know, maybe a drop down at the top navigation menu or maybe some links at your footer, which allows them to easily change the language. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Now to demonstrate this, guys, I'm going to be first kind of using our app service provider. Uh, we have somewhat covered it not fully but basically it allows us to perform some logic or run some code before anything is rendered on the page i will probably have a separate video on service providers but for now just open up this or uh, you can just watch this part uh, later on we are actually going to be doing this in some other places so basically in order to change our locale a lot of all gives us a very easy and convenient way and we can go ahead and use a helper known as app. This is somewhat similar to the auth helper that we have used a couple of times throughout our application. This basically gives you access to your application. And on our application, there is a method of set locale. And if you guys are using uh, VS Code with the PHP plugin or a PHP Storm, you should be able to easily see this or you should get it recommended to you. And as the name suggests, it basically allows you to set the locale or the language of your application, right? And over here, you can pass basically any valid locale that you have, right? So on the previous episode, uh, if we open up our app.config, obviously the default is EN, right? If you have set up, you can use ES, FR, any valid one that you like, okay? So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to ES, right, for Spanish. That's it. So that's all you have to do. This will go ahead and actually set the locale of your application. So right now, as you guys can see, I am indeed using uh, English. I'll do a quick reload. And as you can see, obviously, this one got translated because we have the translation for it. Uh, but you can see also my dates got translated to Spanish, right? I don't speak Spanish, but I assume that is indeed Spanish. Let's try FR for French. And if you reload that, obviously, this one goes back to login to, sh uh, to share your ideas. But the dates did indeed change to uh, French, I believe, right? So if you are using any libraries or packages that do have those translations, they will automatically pick this up, right? So it's very easy to do. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. You can also use the app facade. So uh, the import for it is this one. Let me show it to you guys. Illuminate support uh, facades app. Now, the difference with the, compared to the helper is this is going to be a static method call. All right, so we can go ahead and try this out. As you can see, we are still, it is still indeed uh, working. Again, let's go to Spanish. All right, so it's very simple to do. We can use either the app helper or the app facade. You can also kind of inject this or use the application class. That's also possible. It's part of the Illuminate uh, Foundation. That's a little bit more advanced stuff, so I'm not going to be covering that. Uh, maybe for a different video so that's the basics of setting your locale dynamically now obviously at its current state it's kind of useless to us so what i look would like to do guys is we can probably have some links somewhere on the page which the user can click and then it will allow them to basically switch the language to from english to spanish and you know vice versa so let's go ahead and start the process so i will first go ahead and create the links i think i'm going to go ahead and replace it with this uh, view profile link we have over here it's kind of a useless link so let's open up our sidebar and I guess I can remove this because we no longer need it. So instead of this view profile, I will go ahead and add a couple of links, one for uh, English and one for, let's say, ES for Spanish, right? And again, you guys can go ahead and make this be more pretty or uh, make improve the design. For now, we just want something super simple to just uh, kind of show the idea behind it. So as you can see, we have these two links. If the user clicks on ES, we want them to switch to Spanish. And then if they click on EN, we want them to switch to English, right? So let's go ahead and implement this. So we can go ahead and open up our web.php route file, guys. And I'll add a route right over here so we can easily see it. So let's go ahead and define a get route. Now you can name yours whatever you like. Uh, I think for me, I'll do, let's say, lang. And then after that, we are going to have a parameter or an argument, which is going to accept a, like a dynamic rap language right so in this case i'll i guess name this one also lang why not for language so let's define our function i'm not going to go ahead and create a controller for this you guys can definitely go ahead and do that but i'll just put it here so it's easier for the video we don't have to switch files 
and we also need to receive this over here, right? So this is going to be similar to a variable, right? So this will accept anything, en, fr, es, any language you guys like. And we can just test it out right now by just doing ddlang. So let me go ahead and manually open the route. Uh, I do already have this before, but as you can see, uh, we are indeed seeing en. Let me change this to es. And as you can see, we get es. Let's try fr. And yeah, so it is working. We are indeed getting the language over here for us, right? Now, in order to go ahead and change it, again, we can do the same thing with it under our app service provider. We can either use the app facade or just use the app helper. It's a bit easier. You don't need to import anything. So I'll just use that. And we can do set locale and then pass in lang, just like this, okay? Now, to make sure it got updated, there is actually another uh, method we can use called get locale. And again, this will give you the currently set locale for your application, right? So I can just do something like dd. And let's see if it's actually changing it or not. So I'll do a quick reload, guys. And right now, again, we are DDing the set locale. So this thing is indeed working, right? Now, if we go back and we actually go to our main page, we're actually back to English, right? And the reason is this set locale only sets the locale for that specific request, right? So it's not storing it in session or cookies or anything like that. So if the user, you know, uh, goes to a different page, the locale is set back to English. So in order for us to kind of save or preserve the locale over multiple uh, requests, we need to store it on our sessions, right? So let's go ahead and do that. It's relatively easy to do. Now, we haven't covered sessions yet on a separate video, but it's very easy to access. We can just go ahead and use a session helper. It's, again, very similar to this app. Uh, and then there is a method of put. Basically puts a key and a value on our sessions. And you can name the key whatever you like. In this case, I'll just name it locale. So it kind of matches the name a lot of users. And we can pass it in our locale. Okay, just like this. So now if we run this, it will go ahead and set our current locale and also put it on our session, right? Which is very good. And then later on, whenever we are loading a page, we can go ahead and look into the our session, see if the variable locale exists. If it does, we will go ahead and update it, right? And last but not least, instead of DDing, we can go ahead and maybe redirect the user. So in this case, I'm going to say redirect uh, to route, sorry, route, and let's redirect them back to the dashboard page, okay? So that's it. Uh, let me try again. I'll do lang en. Obviously, as you can see, the user got redirected back. And let's do lang es. So right now, our session thing is indeed working. However, we need to go ahead and read the session and set the locale. And we can do that using a middleware. So let's go ahead and set this up, guys. It's relatively easy to do. So let's open up the terminal. Uh, I'm going to run php artisan make middleware uh, and you can name it whatever you like i guess I'll, I'll name it set locale be exactly identical to this so let's go ahead and make it set locale let's make the s capital all right so now that we have this middleware uh, again guys if you remember on the episode for the middleware we can set up our middleware to run on every request or on for all our routes so what we need to do is check if a locale session exists if it does, update the locale. So that's the basic logic we need to go ahead and perform. So let's do a simple if statement. And in order to check if the locale session exists, we can go ahead and use the session helper again. So in this case, I can say session. And the session helper has a handy method of has. It's somewhat similar to the request helper we have used throughout the course. Basically just checks if the session has a specific key. So I can say has locale. Again, this has to match the name you used over here or the key used over here. So here I used locale. I'll use a locale here as well. So it returns true if the key does exist. And if it does exist, we can go ahead and actually just literally you do the exact same thing here. I just copy it. Uh, I'll paste it over here. Of course, we don't have this lang variable, so we need to load this from our session. I can say session get. So uh, similar to put, it also has a method of get, so we can get something from our session. So get locale, right? Just like that. 
as you can see. And again, if you're on VS Code or PHP Storm, get an item from our session, right? Very simple stuff. Okay, that's it. So this will go ahead and check if the locale session exists. If it does, it will update the locale for that request, right? Very simple stuff. I can just remove the comments for now. A very uh, easy or simple middleware. So now that we have done this guy, guys, we need to go ahead and also register our middleware. So let's go ahead. Middlewares are registered or uh, kind of configured under HTTP kernel.php. Again, we, we did do that when we were covering roles and permissions, guys. So the easiest way to run this middleware for all our requests is by actually registering it under this middleware group. So middleware groups, as the name suggests, guys, is a group of middlewares. So instead of kind of assigning them individually to a route, you can assign a bunch of routes at the same time. Now, the way Laravel works by default, it obviously comes with two route groups by default. The web route group is automatically applied to any route configured or defined under web.php file. Okay, and again, the names do match, right? So it automatically goes ahead and actually adds this to any route we have over here, right? So all of these automatically have this uh, web route group. So if we add a middle over here, it will also run for any route we have over here, right? So for us, we obviously want to run this set locale middleware. So I'll just copy it and I'll add it over here, our set locale middleware, right? So that's all we have to do. And one way we can know if it's working or not, I'll just do a simple DD running, okay? So let's do reload. As you can see, it is indeed echoing it out, right? So our middleware was autumn was indeed registered and if i remove it from here and i reload we are not getting the dd anymore so it's a very important step make sure you actually you register your uh, middleware okay so let's test it out guys uh, yeah it is indeed not working so it automatically switched the language back to spanish right so let's go ahead now that we have defined this go ahead and actually update our links. I believe it was inside left sidebar. Now, right now is uh, going under profile. Uh, let's go ahead and give a name to our route. I'll name it Lang, I guess for now. Maybe we can change this later on. So we can see here say Lang. And as the second argument, basically because we are expecting this Lang argument, uh, we can either pass it in as an array like this, lang, let's say en. But since we only have one argument, Laravel kind of has a shorthand for us. We can just pass it in as a second argument to our route method, right? So in this case, that was en. Here we can say lang es. All right, so now we have these two routes. We can go back, do a quick reload. I'll click on English, guys. Boom, we are now using English. I click on es. We are using uh, Spanish. Let's add a few more. Let's do a uh, French as well. So I'll do reload. I click on FR. Uh, obviously, none of these are translated, so it defaults back to English, but a lot of carbon does support French. So as you can see, our dates actually got uh, translated to French, right? So uh, that's the very basics of it, guys. If you want to manually or dynamically set uh, the language on your application, so obviously the user interface is up to you. Maybe you can have a drop down, whatever you like, as long as you can kind of set up a route like this. The route is also customizable, so you can go ahead and set it up any way uh, you like. This is, I think, the simplest way of doing it. The logic is very simple. You just need two lines of code and you are actually set to go. So uh, on the next episode, guys, I will kind of expand upon this a little bit more. I will show you guys how you can actually do your translations or put your translations in a JSON file instead of the setup we currently have. And I will also go ahead and actually translate more of our application. So right now we have only translated this login to share ideas. So on the next episode, I will actually try to translate more of it so you guys can see kind of more use cases such as how to do pluralization, how to pass in arguments, if you need a, an argument inside your translation, all of those things I'll try to cover in the upcoming episode. So hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.